Hello and welcome back to Prophecy of Pendor. Now, as you can see, we're actually up against a unique spawn uh, by the name of Heinrich. I actually mentioned him in the previous episode. I don't believe I have ever fought him ever before. So this is going to be a very interesting, <laughs> very interesting fight indeed. All right, this seems like the best possible location for our troops. Just look at this amazing hill right here. And it's taking me a huge amount of time to get up there, even on this Noldor mount. So any infantry, they're probably going to take even longer. Maybe? <laughs> Hopefully. That's all I can say. Because the main thing that we have to think about here is that Heinrich has a massive army of infantry and very strong infantry at that. These guys will absolutely slaughter any cavalry that go into him. So we are definitely going to need to be a bit careful about that. But otherwise, I think we pretty much have a lot of free reign about what we can do here and how we can actually succeed in this battle. So let's see. Mm, okay, so we're going to hold fire. Going to hold fire with our archers and cavalry right here. And I'm going to do something very dubious shall we say now this dubious thing that i'm gonna do is moving all of our cavalry to the back of the battlefields completely all the way to the back and we're gonna do something and i think that you're gonna be not shocked at all <laughs> anyway we're gonna be dismounting all of our all of our cavalry right here and we're gonna be moving them back just behind the archers and we're going to use them as a second line of archers. And hopefully they will be able to use their ranged abilities to help us out. Because as you can see, we've got a bunch of hero adventurers, maiden adventurers. We have some Noldor nobles as far as I'm aware. Lethal Diren, of course, is also tagged as a cavalry unit. And he's going to be absolutely insane here. So hopefully that's going to work out quite nicely. Otherwise, we're just going to spread out a little bit as well. And we, uh, you know what, let's spread out our cavalry a little bit as well. Let's spread them out. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure that every single person can actually shoot. Because if they can't shoot, then it's basically pointless anyway. So let's just spread them out once more. And I think that is actually looking pretty nice right now. So where is the opponent? That is the thing. Yeah, so I don't know whether you noticed the numbers at the very beginning of the fight, but we have 415 enemies against 157 of us. And did you see that little wooden box right down there? That is, well, that, that is my inventory. And I would love to be able to uh, <laughs> resupply my arrows, but that doesn't look to be happening anytime soon. Not unless we can absolutely kill everyone along the way. Now bear in mind that the enemy does have a significant amount of very, very powerful crossbowmen. We're going to start firing away now, because as you can see they're actually coming through the trees, being very sneaky actually doing that. So let's try our very best to eliminate all of them. This is probably the best hill we're ever going to get, and let's keep an eye on the text box. Let's keep an eye on the text box, because if I need to, I will be retreating. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This guy is going to absolutely murder me in every way. If we allow him to. But if we don't allow him to, we, well, we have a very, very good chance of getting a fantastic Qualus gem. We have a 70% chance, once again, to capture any unique spawn. The, all these great swords and, and various other forlorn hope units and things like that, those guys are insane. They will murder us in so many different ways, but hopefully we will be okay with the hill. The, the hill is the main thing here. That is the main thing that is going to give us any kind of advantage. And I haven't seen him get killed yet. I haven't seen him get killed, so I'm actually liking this quite a bit. And I think what I might do is I think I might retreat. We've already killed 129. He has not died as far as I'm aware, so I'm going to retreat right here. People are going to be a bit annoyed, but that's okay. 
Uh, as you can see, we were actually starting to lose quite a few units. Did he? Oh, he actually did get wounded. Ah, oh, now that is actually kind of a shame. Hmm. Okay, well, that's not actually a big deal. That is not a big deal. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get out of here. You can actually see where I am right now. And yeah, you're going to, you know, complain. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue to just take him up into the hills. That was a really fantastic situation for us to be in. But I kind of feel like, hey, you know what? Let's just try to maximize our opportunities here. And I don't really want to be in a position where we will be uh, outmatched just literally because we run out of ammunition or something like that. And I kind of want to resupply on that. So what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to run away a little bit, try and get him to restore his HP, and then we'll see what happens. There are about six days left in the month, and we will be going over to Elecre closer to the time to do the thing that I really wanted to do, and it's going to hopefully pay dividends. All right, so we're once again in the battle against Heinrich, and I am in a rather weird location because I've literally just run straight north into Ravenstern's mountains, and I've gone a little bit too deep, I think. <laughs> I've gone a little bit too deep here. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go, but uh, let's get to this one over here, I suppose. Let's get to this one. This should give us the greatest positioning. Now, as I mentioned beforehand, he does have some really good crossbowmen, and those crossbowmen are going to have some extreme range, and that is exactly the reason why we kind of have to negate their range with, well, a mountain or a hill of or two, you know, and uh, hopefully try to get something from that. What we're going to do, though, is I'm going to place my cavalry down there, and we're going to do the same thing that I did previously, where we're just going to have our infantry down below, basically. Then our archers behind them, and then our cavalry once they have, you know, once they've uh, all kind of gathered around that little area there, we're going to take them off their mounts once again. And there seems to be a couple of them all the way over there in the distance. Don't know why they're over there, but oh well, never mind. I guess it's okay. And yeah, now we're going to need to start actually firing away here. And our cavalry needs to get here as soon as possible, please. Because otherwise, this is going to turn into a bad, bad situation indeed. Because there are a lot of crossbowmen. And these crossbowmen, they're never really going to run out of ammunition. It's going to take them a very long time to do that. So hopefully, once my cavalry gets into position, they will be able to show them a thing or two. But uh, we'll see. Yeah, what? What? A Methenheim regular crossbow was killed by a heavy crossbow? Well, of course, but really, was not in, not expecting that. That's for sure. Well, I'm hopeful that my forces will actually be able to do something here. Ooh, this this might actually be a little bit more worrying than I anticipated. Because if they take a defensive posture, this is going to be rather harsh. Mm. You know, I'm partially thinking that maybe what we should do is instead of fighting them on a big hill like this, we should probably go and try and fight them on a flat battlefield. So we, we actually have the advantage at that point. But what I wanted to do was try to eliminate the last remaining little bit of two-handed infantry that they had, because those guys are going to be absolutely insane to deal with for our cavalry. Let's spread these guys out a little bit. Spread the archers out a little bit as well, so we can get a, a wider arc on things and try and, you know, not block our people as much. And, uh, yeah, so these guys right down here, they have pole arms primarily by the looks of things. And they're going to be pretty difficult for our cavalry to deal with. So it's kind of the reason why I wanted to head in here once again and try to, you know, get the greater advantage with archers but unfortunately the enemy is very good at utilizing their own crossbowmen and their own ranged units and it is making things a little bit uncomfortable 
So I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do this, but hopefully if I can survive this and eliminate about a hundred of the enemy's units, then uh, we should be able to go into a flat battlefield fight and actually, you know, make some headway here or there. But as you can see, it's kind of difficult to get a bead on them anyway. And there you go, I actually did kill some people. Three. Are you serious? I only killed three? That is so disappointing. Really is. Alright, so how is it going so far? 65. We've eliminated quite a few of the polearm users. And I think I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna retreat once again. So we gained eight morale for that one. Yeah, we lost a lot of people in that. That was not very good. Mm. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's really grinding my gears about this whole thing, but I, I can't really do much else about it. As you can see, we're right up in the mountains here, and I'm going to have to see what I can do. He has 90 heavy crossbowmen still remaining, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try and get into a flat battlefield situation. Yeah, so Rain's getting kind of irritated about running away now and everything, but it's okay. So let's try and get into a flat battlefield, and then we will try to attack once all our forces have restored themselves. All right, so here we go. We are now ready to head in against him once again. So as you can see, it's a little bit more even this time around, and we are gonna be doing our standard sort of attack where we have the infantry and the archers in a decent position, and then I'll have my cavalry follow me, and hopefully we will be able to do a couple of hit and run attacks and see what happens. I don't really want to head in straight away and charge them because of course he still has about 60 or so polearm users who are going to be extremely effective at dealing with cavalry. And if I can kind of get them a little bit thinned out, just a little bit thinned out before we actually go in for the charge, then this should be kind of good. But the problem with that is that their heavy crossbows, there's still 90 of them. There's still 90 of those guys. So they are going to absolutely destroy us if we allow them to. So I'm going to have to be a bit careful here. Maybe, hey, you know what? Shall we just charge straight on in? I don't know whether that's a good idea. That's probably not the best idea, let's face it. So kind of just going to wait and see what really happens here. As you can see, there's the polearm users and the crossbows are just by the side of them so if we can keep these guys moving around and maybe we can have a little bit of shooty shooty action going on here then that shouldn't be too bad but I've said before that horse archers are really good against these guys but not so much against the heavy crossbows but maybe we can just yes ah this is working out a little bit better than I anticipated they're actually scattering a little bit as you can see, and they're actually deciding to maybe charge in and leave their crossbowmen alone, which is really, really good for us and bad for them. So I am going to just charge straight on in here, see what we can do, try and take them out. They are going to be really damaging if they actually hit me though, so I've got to be really careful here. Let's tell our guys to charge in, tell the cavalry to charge in at least. And we will see if we can eliminate a bunch of their crossbowmen in the meantime. There we go. That one's dead. Uh, let's get that guy dead as well. We've just got to try and kill as many of them as possible. And I think this is, yeah, this is a nice shock action that we've got going on here. And hopefully we will achieve a nice victory and indeed a nice capture as a result. I think we might be okay here. Ah, uh, I'm not killing anything. That is really bad. I have to be, as, you know, I have to be efficient here. I have to be efficient. Otherwise, we are going to have problems. These guys are really hard to kill as well, as you can see. They actually take more than just the one hit. There we go. Oh, we leveled up. Nice. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Ah, uh, let's be careful. I'm being very reckless here, but I kind of have to be because we are outnumbered pretty significantly. How are our archers doing? Actually, not very good. Take out that crossbowman. How are we doing? Killed 97. Oh, my horse died instantly? What? How did... What? what? Was it damaged beforehand? Maybe it was actually damaged beforehand and I didn't realize. Okay, there's a horse right here. 
Stop, 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 stop. Can I? Yeah, yeah there we go. Whew. Okay, that was good. Okay, so now... Ooh, I don't know whether we can do this. I don't know whether we can do this, especially considering I'm on a really, really slow horse right now. And generally, I kind of need a fast horse to actually be kind of effective. So I don't know whether we can do it. Okay. No, be careful. Oh, now I'm, now I'm a bit worried. Now I'm a bit worried, because I think we're actually... Hmm. 28 left. I don't think we can do it. I think we've got to have... We've got to retreat. That is... Oh, that grinds my gear so badly right now. 27 against 78. Oh, yeah, that grinds my gear so badly. Look at him. Look at him. He's only got 78 left. I've, I've technically got 72, but I need Anson to uh, actually, you know, not die, and uh, hopefully, oh yes, he is actually alive. That's actually really good, because that means his wound treatment is going to get all our guys on their feet really, really easily, and then we should be able to finish off the guy. Oh no! Oh no, there's a Ravenstone vassal. Come on, come over here, come over here, quickly, quickly. Come on, Heinrich, run away from that Ravenstone vassal. He's, he's a mean person. He, you want to follow me, yes. There we go. He's actually following us. Fantastic. All right. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to need to get Oberist uh, Heinrich to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, to about 20% or 15% at the very least to be able to engage upon him again. All right. Here we go. This is a very small battlefield. Hopefully, we will be able to achieve a victory here. And we have a very even amount of units in comparison to him. So we're just going to charge straight on in. That's literally all we're going to do. Just going to charge straight on in with our cavalry here because I don't want these heavy crossbowmen gaining any more of an advantage than they already have by... Oh, yeah, that's painful. That's painful. We don't really want them to get any more advantages. And hopefully us just getting straight on in there is going to eliminate most of their advantage which is, of course, to deal massive damage with their crossbows. So if I can just deal some damage along the way here and not get shot again, then I will be in a pretty decent position, and hopefully we will not lose. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, I am actually kind of... Am I? Are, are, we, are we losing this? This this is uh, this is this is kind of confusing. <laughs> this is kind of confusing for me because I thought to myself, okay, yeah, we've definitely definitely got a good shot. You know, we've definitely got a good shot. I could potentially die here. Do bear that in mind. Uh, I'm gonna have to tell my archers to charge in. We do have a couple of horse archers and everything still available for battle. I have to uh, be a bit careful about having a look at the casualty report right now. There's only 12 enemies remaining. Okay, I think we might have this in the bag then. We might have it. And that is going to be fantastic. And fancy not taking this guy prisoner now. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if I don't take him prisoner and we have literally, well, basically spent my entire army trying to get this guy? <laughs> oh, well, it's all pre-rolled, so I guess we'll see. Ah, phew. Okay, that was actually really close. There you go. Okay. Yes. Okay. Phew. We actually do get to take him prisoner. That is fantastic. Let's do it. And then we can just let our people just take whatever they want to take, of course. And we'll just take some of that. The chess piece is okay. And now here's the cool thing. We don't really need to worry about our army at all. That was the main reason why I was kind of going super hard against this guy. Because we now have the opportunity to basically have... 43 Salian Rogue Knights, for example. 45 Seer Favorites and Seer Initiates. Do these Seer Initiates actually become anything? Yeah, they become Seer Favorites. And then the Seer Favorites become Doom Guides. 
Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? Yeah, kind of crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those. We're going to take the Salian Rogue Knights. We're going to take the Rogue Blackheart Knights. And then Ravenstone Highlander is pretty good. I think the Squire levels up, doesn't it? Yeah, it levels up into Knights. So technically what I could do is I could, I could either take Seer Initiates, who are going to level up into Seer Favorites, who are pretty good units eventually. They do become the Doom Guides, which I very much like. But I'm not entirely sure if I can... Mm, if I can level them up before they die, that's the main issue here. I guess, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just try it out and see whether we can make a make a good go of it, because that might be pretty fun. These guys will level up into adventurers. Made an adventurer right there. Okay, yeah. So as you can see, I basically lost a whole bunch of my Dashar Ghazi Stalkers, which I very much don't like, because <laughs> it would have been really cool to keep them around, but... It's all for a Qualus gem, you know, it's all for a Qualus gem. Okay, so there you go, that's it, done. That is it. <laughs> Phew, that was much too close for my liking, in my opinion, that was just way too close. Okay, so let's have a look at the CF favorites here. So they're pretty decent, as you can see, they've got five in a power draw, because obviously they mainly use bows. They also have 225 in all weapon proficiencies. They have 66 HP, which is really quite decent. And I don't know how... Wait a minute, let me just have a look-see here. Okay, so they need to get quite a lot of experience. That is, what is that, 367,000. So they need to get about 50 or so thousand to be able to gain one level. That's pretty harsh. But, as you can see, they do level up into this, which is an absolutely insane unit that I absolutely love using a lot. They are really, really good. Anyway, we are going to be speaking to him now, and I'm going to say, hey, you know, give me that Qualus gem, because a Qualus gem is basically the, the best thing that we can get for this. I mean, technically, I could get the secrets of his unique equipment, which basically is snake cult stuff for your custom knighthood order. If you want to, you know, make a knighthood order that is basically modeled after the snake cult, then you could do that. Uh, I'm actually just going to quickly take a look and see if I have space. I have one space. I'm actually just going to get rid of this real quick because it's only a small amount of cash and I'm kind of paranoid about that. want to try and make sure that we are all good. Anyway, I could get a pile of diamonds, a large pouch of diamonds. Is that actually necessary for anything? That is kind of necessary for the mystical rune plate upgrade i think but that is going to be quite some time i need to do a whole bunch of noldor related stuff before i can actually do anything with the mystical rune plate is there anything else that i want to do with a large pile of diamonds not really the only other thing that i would want to do is of course spend fifty thousand to buy a medium pouch of diamonds which will allow us to get the wonderful pendle horse but otherwise Qualus gems are the way to go. So I will be accepting a Qualus gem and then we'll be moving onward. Okay, wow. That was much too close for my liking. Much too close. But the main, what amusing, what is most amusing to me about that entire fight is the thing that a lot of people say that their, you know, their two handed infantry that he was using are just so so powerful and yeah they totally are you know if you charge in your your cavalry to those guys they're going to absolutely get murdered but i found that their crossbowmen were actually the main issue which is actually kind of hilarious now what we're going to do is i am going to gonna leave some people behind apparently that's what i'm going to do but what I'm going to do is I'm going to rush over to Elecrae's Woods. <laughs> Warlord Zolkar, get out of here. I, I defeated you before. You... Uh, okay, well, anyway, what did I actually even lose here? Not sure. Not sure. A couple of people. Not entirely sure what. But if that's, that, if that's the cost that it takes, that's the cost that it takes. Because I'd rather lose a little bit rather than everything. So we're going to just try and rush over here as quickly as we can because there is something very specific I want to do between these dates. And I think you may have already realized what it is. You'll see. In just a second. There we go. Ah. Uh, okay, I need to wait. I think until the daytime, maybe. 
Yep, there we go. All right, so this is what I wanted to do. For those of you that didn't know, basically every single month there is a tournament at the Noldor Castle. And this tournament is very important for what I want to do with the mystical rune plate. So let's have a look here. I'm going to place a bet on myself. I am going to be extremely unlikely to win this. Because uh, they're all using bows. And you know how good they are at using bows, right? But maybe I can actually... Oh, so Alistair, you got eliminated, you idiot. <laughs> kind of surprising. Okay, so let's kill that. Kill that guy. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, he's dead. Okay, so I can actually just continue onward. All right. So basically, the one thing that I can say about the Noldor tournaments, you need to be very, very careful about how you do them because they are going to be difficult. They're going to be very difficult. But that's the thing. They're kind of easy in one respect because you kind of know what the Noldor are going to do. You have a, a pretty decent idea as to what their playstyle is going to be like. And because they are just so insane in almost every aspect, they're kind of predictable in that way. And of course, because they are also so freaking good, you know, they are basically going to make amazing teammates. So it doesn't really matter whether you have, you know, a whole bunch of enemies on, on, on the oppos opposing side, you're going to have an insanely good team yourself like for example that you see that twilight knight yeah twilight knights are probably the best units in the game and they're just going to be so incredibly powerful okay so this is going to be a bit worrying for me because i have no shield and i'm gonna to have to beat oh never mind thank you twilight knight wow you're a beast yeah he knows <laughs> he knows he's a beast doesn't he he certainly does. Okay, thankfully I do have some horse archery now, so I should be able to do something here. And I'm going to just try and take out this one's horse. There we go. Oh, Twilight Knight. Come and save me, Twilight Knight. I'm sure you will be able to. If you don't, then I will be very surprised indeed. Oh, so rain. Oh, that was actually so rain. Okay, come on, Twilight Knight. Kill this one too. Oh, uh, you know what? It's going to be so funny to actually fight against this Twilight Knight. I'm probably going to go in a one versus one with this guy at the end, aren't I? Oh, dear. Okay, this is actually a free-for-all, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm going to try and kill the archer, I suppose. Because the archer is probably going to be the main problem for me. Maybe. Oh, never mind. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, phew. Okay. Oh, that was a Noldor Twilight Knight as well. That is fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're get once again going to try and eliminate the horse. And there you go. Okay, so now they can fight it out. And I will take on whoever is the victor. And we will see. That's actually a Noldor Noble. I would have expected the Maiden Ranger to actually win that fight. But apparently not. Now, technically what I could do here is I could use the horse strategy, you know, the one that I've used beforehand to win tournaments, where you just run down the guy and then you hit him with your your melee weapon, but I'm kind of a bit worried about doing that because it is indeed a Noldor tournament, and I really quite badly want to win this. So it is one of those things where you're kind of putting winning over you know, strategies in this case at least. But, it's, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh, wow. The Twilight Knight is not in this anymore. So the Noldor Noble and two Rangers are what we have to fight. Okay, so... Hmm, this is actually not too bad. Thankfully, the AI is well known for not leading their target. So it is kind of easy to get a decent amount of damage on them and close the gap. And there you go. I think we're going to actually be done. I think we're going to be pretty done with this. Okay, so... Oh, okay. This might be a bit problematic. But yeah, if you keep just strafing like this, you can pretty easily close the gap. Like so. And boom. And then you can just do some damage. There we are. Phew. Okay. Wow. I'm... I'm really pleased about that. Really pleased about that. Okay, so what did I get? They gave me a Qualys gem. 
Are you serious? I have three Qualys gems in my inventory right now. They gave me a Qualys gem. That is insane. And by the way, the rewards for this Nordor tournament are pre-rolled. So it doesn't matter when you do it. They are always going to give you the same reward every single time. So even if you reload or whatever, you're going to get the same exact thing. So because I was able to win there, I gained a Qualys gem. And if I had, you know reloaded beforehand i would have gotten a qualis gem again and again and again and again it wouldn't have made any difference however next month might be a qualis gem again there's a 20 percent chance to get a qualis gem and then there's a varying amount of different percentage chances to get other items and uh, various equipment from winning the tournament so it is always a percentage chance about what you get but what you get is always pre-rolled so it doesn't matter how many times you actually try to get a different result anyway that will be it for this episode i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time